Namaste. In yet another episode of Nama Gita, we are now in episode 99. And the architect of Nama Gita is here right with us, Praveena. Srimati Praveena. She has been initially doing the English versions also. I thought I will also contribute at least point, not, not one person, but add, adding the English version possible. The external amount of research that goes behind every episode of Nama Gita is mind blowing. So we have completed 98 episodes, completed all the anubhavams of all the names so far. And this episode is about an analysis of the name. We, we all go to beaches, we know, we are very, very familiar with beaches. Some of us, like me, who stand at the, just the coast and just ensure that the water touches my feet and say I am in the beach and come back. There are people who take a dive and take a bath and swim and that in the beach and come. There are people who ride rafts and there are deep sea drivers. Who gets the maximum benefit from the ocean? The deep sea drivers. Just as that, as Mahabharata itself is a sagaram, a big ocean, and in that, Srimad Bhagavad Gita is another sagaram, and here we are starting to enjoy the name. So when we started this exercise, it, we didn't want it to be just a name, I meaning Keshava means this, Madhava means this, that's what the easiest. And to be very honest, there are many works that is already there, available in place. So what interested Praveena into the whole thing is that in a conversation comprising of four people, which is basically Sri Krishna Paramatma and Arjuna, and we had Dhritarashtra who cannot see this war, Kurukshetra war. So Sanjaya is helping him through his divine powers by telling him what is happening in Kurukshetra. So if you observe in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, there are four main characters. Dhritarashtra and Sanjaya on one end, Arjuna and Krishna Paramatma on the other end. Then we have the Veda Vyasa who compelled this Bhagavad Gita, we will talk about it later. So with these four people talking and we are saying that Krishna's names are mentioned. And we were pleasantly surprised that there were many number of names of Krishna used. Wow! This is the first wow. And said, okay, we have to go deep into it. Then the context in which the names are used. And how, how many times a particular name comes. So the, the experience, see life is all about Anubhavadhara, right? So the Anubhava keep, kept coming and kept coming. That so much that it got engrossed in the whole thing. So Praveena, totally, how many names of Lord Krishna happens in Srimad Bhagavad Gita? Oh, that was a very, very interesting thing. First of all, namaste to everybody. Uh, I'm seeing you all after a long time in the English version. So, there are a lot of names which, as you rightly said, have been used by Arjuna, Sanjaya and Lord Krishna himself. And there are a lot of names which are repeated several times. Um, and when we include all the repetitions, the total number of times that I could get was 145 different names, different times, yeah. 145 times Krishna's names have been called. That is a Nama Sankirtana by itself. If you just read in Kali Yuga, Nama Sankirtana is important. We all know we set the context in the first episode. And if Srimad Bhagavad Gita can give that kind of experience just as Nama Sankirtana. So is all 145 unique names in Srimad Bhagavad Gita? Um, well, I said because there are many repetitions, right? When I take just the unique names, we have around 72 different unique names. Usually we say, right, the nadi or the pulse that uh, every person has. For a minute, it's supposed to, uh, you know, the count is supposed to be 72. So possibly the inference is that, okay, just as how we have 72 nadi for every minute, maybe we should repeat God's names every single moment our pulse beats, right? So 72 uh, unique names were there. So Sri Krishna is everything for us. He is the Sarvaloka Maheshwara, we saw that. And if we have to keep thinking about him, every 72 pulse, every pulse that we keep saying Krishna, 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 or uses other names, Madhava, that itself is an Anubhava that we got from here. So these names, are these generic names or have we been able to classify these names in different forms? Yeah, uh, actually there are some names which are direct, direct in the sense that Arjuna would have addressed Krishna as Hey Keshava, Hey uh, Achyuta. So what happens is those are the typical names that everybody takes into consideration. Now what happens is Sanjaya would not have used Hey Krishna because Sanjaya is telling that this is how Krishna uh, you know, informed Arjuna or this is how Arjuna understood from Krishna. So what happens is the name of Krishna is being used by Sanjaya also. So that was another category that we grouped. Now, going by the experience of learning Sahasranama, where Bhishmacharya says 
यानी नामानी गौनानी इत्यातानी महात्मन ऋषि परिहितानी तानी वक्षामी सो व्हाट एवर आर द नेम्स व्हिच आर द गुण सूचका नेम्स व्हाट एवर आर द क्वालिटीज ऑफ द एट्रिब्यूट्स ऑफ द लॉर्ड आई एम कंपाइलिंग thousand of those names which have been used by all the rishis from time immemorial so bishmacharya says that these are the gauna names so gauna here would mean the beautiful qualities of our lord the kalyana gunas of the lord or it could also mean his rupa like he has a chakra with him or he is the holder of gadin so he is called as chakrin or gadin or it could be you know his uh, supernatural self which is like sarvaloka maheshwara which we call as a swarupam so all these are classified as a different head so i have uh, the actual swa namam whatever is addressed you know the sambodhana namam and i also have what we call as the gauna namas here that is a very interesting thing so technically we talk of 72 unique names grouped into four buckets one is the direct names and the second bucket which is sub classified into three the gauna names are basically based on his gunas based on his rupa and based on his swarupa which is his own independence and all that this is amazing experience and that kind of anubhavam comes only when you do a deep dive actually i have uh, created a chart so that everybody can uh, get a little uh, glimpse into what we've done so you can have a look at these charts now if you have a look at the chart here um we have two different charts one chart is along with the number of repetitions uh, we said there are 145 different names that we have so i have grouped it based on how many names were addressed by arjuna sanjaya and krishna and next to it you can see the unique names which which are again grouped as what are the names which are uh, been addressed by arjuna sanjaya and krishna so we have the grouping as what are the actual names and what are the gauna names what are based on his uh, gunas and rupas so we have 72 unique names of which 59 of these names uh, have been used by arjuna 12 by sanjaya and 14 by krishna again uh, it's further classified into what are the vastavikam names and the gauna names um arjuna has used 46 vastavika names according to our research sanjaya has used 12 and krishna has used 6 and it will be very interesting to notice that sanjaya has not used any gauna names at all here so that's a very interesting aspect that we could observe that is a very very interesting analysis because when i was looking at the chapter wise names my first gut feel was that because arjuna was uh, totally depressed even his own gandiva which is a pride for a person of his caliber could fall down from his hand you know it just fell down and he was totally depressed so i was thinking that maybe when he was low he would have addressed krishna with more names so the first chapter typically must have had uh, maximum names alternatively i was thinking like maybe the vishwarupa darshana would have had maximum number of names and yes because he was so flabbergasted by seeing the vishwarupa darshana he was like addressing krishna with several different names i would rather say that vishwarupa adhyaya itself is like a nama sankirtana because he has used lord's names unique names 48 different names in vishwarupa adhyaya so the 11th chapter has 48 names of lord krishna and following that again uh, my analysis was a little interesting because the next maximum number of names used was not the first chapter as i guessed but it was the 10th chapter the 10th chapter is about the vibhuti yogam where the lord says that all these are my aishwaryas you know all these belong to me so i am the akshara in a i am the arjuna in pandava so a lot of things in daityas amam daityas and prakrada so krishna says a lot of these things and arjuna addresses lord krishna with several different names and there are around 15 names in the 10th chapter and in the first chapter there are nine names of course the nine names have been repeated several times so that is a different count but if we take the unique number of names then the classification is 11th chapter followed by the 10th followed by the first chapter excellent this is again true to its nature of the 11th chapter as a vishwarupa chapter no wonder it's got the maximum number of names but uh, can can i know which name has been used maximum number of times where again that's a very very interesting thing so before we go into the actual names inside bhagavad gita one thing we should remember is there are four people uh, dhridrashtra sanjaya on one side and arjuna and uh, lord krishna on the other side who are having interaction simultaneously now all these was compiled by maharishi vedavyasa 
Now, when Maharishi Vedavyasa is writing something saying that, you know, this was mentioned by Lord Krishna, he uses only one name. He is a sage who knows all the names, but the name that he chose to use was Bhagavan. So he always says, Sri Bhagavan Vacha, Sri Bhagavan Vacha. So if we take that into consideration, Bhagavan has been used 28 times by Sage Veda Vyasa and Arjuna uses Bhagavan twice in the 10th chapter. So that makes it 30 different times the name Bhagavan has been used in Bhagavad Gita. The name itself is Bhagavad Gita, right? So that is one of the very important things that we should remember. So inside that, if we have to take a look at what was the name used during this conversation, it is of course our favorite name, all of us love this name, it is Krishna. So Krishna has been used 12 times, of which 9 times Arjuna himself has addressed Lord as Krishna and Sanjaya has used it 3 times. Now further to this, I wanted to know what is the second most, uh, you know, uh, usually uh, we don't stop with just the first one. So the name Rishikesa, you know, was the name which was used maximum number of times because Sanjaya has chosen to use it in the first and second chapter five different times and Arjuna has used it twice. So that makes it seven times the name Rishikesa has been used. And the third most frequently used name was Janardana, which Arjuna is using. In fact, Janardana has been used only by Arjuna and that's been used six times in Bhagavad Gita. This is excellent actually. See, this kind of uh, insights that we get is just mind blowing because this also gets us more attract, attracted and attached to Srimad Bhagavad Gita. For Krishna itself, we should get attached and attracted, but these insights also attract us. I am intrigued by one fact that we are talking about four people Tridrasha, Sanjaya talking, and uh, Arjuna and Krishna Bhagavan are talking. So that means Dhridrasha has not used one name in this whole thing. This is a very interesting again. Four people are talking and poor Dhridrasha, even at that time, he couldn't be blessed to even call Krishna by once. Actually, he just uh, starts the entire Bhagavad Gita with one sloka in the beginning. After that, he is only a listener. He does not contribute. So Dharmakshetri, Kurukshetri, even in that, he says, Mamaka Pandavaha. So there is no question of bringing in Krishna's name. Krishna's name. Excellent. So I would like to know, because in this conversation, what are the common names that uh, Sanjaya, Arjuna and even Krishna Paramatma himself uses some names? So what is the common name that has come up? Oh, that actually opens up a bundle of interesting things I would say because um, as you know, Arjuna and Krishna are relatives. right? So uh, Vasudeva's son is Krishna and Kaunteya is Arjuna, Kunti's son is Arjuna and Vasudeva and Kunti are you know brother-sister. So the easiest thing would be for Arjuna to address Krishna as Vasudeva. But when I analyze these names, not once has Arjuna addressed Krishna as Vasudeva. Sanjaya has used Vasudeva to address Krishna and Krishna himself has said that he is Vasudeva. So he is called himself Vasudeva. But not once has Arjuna called. So that is a very interesting thing. So once I started you know enjoying this part of the analysis i have created some charts which might interest you so if you notice here we have two beautiful charts one showing the actual names with which krishna has called and the other is the gauna names that uh, we've taken up so if you have a look at this there is only one name which has been used by both krishna and sanjaya and the name is vasudeva as we were just discussing on the other hand, if you notice, Krishna and Arjuna, both of them have used three different names of Lord Krishna in common, which is Ajaha, Bhutesha and Purushottama. So to this beautiful analysis, I also wanted to add the names where Krishna explains about himself. And the two beautiful names are, he says, I am Sarvaloka Maheshwara and Krishna uses that. Uh, two times actually, but we've taken only the unique names without repetitions here. So, Sarvaloka Maheshwara is one of the names and he also says that I am the Kala Tattvam. I am here as Kala to, you know, eat everything, to uh, swallow everything into me. So, these are the two unique things which Krishna uses, Sarvaloka Maheshwara and Kala. So, that's the beautiful chart. If you look at the second diagram that's there, you can see that Bhuta Bhavana is the beautiful name which has been commonly used as a Gauna name between uh, Krishna and Arjuna, both addressing Lord Krishna as Bhuta Bhavana. It will be interesting to know that Sahasranama also has this beautiful name Bhuta Bhavana. 
and as we said earlier Sanjaya has not used any Gauna names so you don't see any values in that part of this chapter. Now this analysis I know it's a treasure that we are getting pearls and few diamonds and here and there but this itself precious on its own but we know that deep sea diving will give you much uh, priceless treasures. So what would be your very significant observation on going further deep into this Nama Gita and analyzing Srimad Bhagavad Gita? Actually, I have analyzed this entire thing based on Arjuna's mindset and also some of the aspects from Sanjaya's perspective because during the same situation, Arjuna has used different names but Sanjaya has addressed things very differently. Like I said, Rishi Kesa was not used by Arjuna in the initial chapters but Sanjaya has used it five times just in the first and the second chapter. So, let me explain some of my observations based on Arjuna, what is the unique thing that I observed when he used it and what are some things which I loved about Sanjaya's way of handling things and of course Sri Krishna. So let me just explain that. Arjuna uses the term Achyuta as the very first name in Bhagavad Gita and the very last name in Bhagavad Gita which is a very very interesting thing and the only other place he uses it is during the Vishwarupa Darshana in the 11th chapter. So Achyuta seems to be starting with Akhara, it is the Vishnu Vachaka Shabda, it has been used three times by Arjuna and we've seen a bit of this earlier also. The next very very interesting thing that I observed in um, Arjuna's way of addressing Sri Krishna is there are a lot of things I'm just going to show one example here. In the 11th chapter Arjuna is now witnessing the unbelievable Vishwarupa Darshana. At that point of time as we said he's used 48 different names to address Lord Krishna and there is one name called Devesha which Arjuna has used. Now Devesha means the Lord of all the Devas. Now, who are the Devas? We say there are 33 crore Devas, right? So, the 33 Devas are the leaders and there are uh, Koti people under them. Koti is just means it's an infinite number of people who belong to that particular group. For example, the Maruts are addressed, the Adityas are addressed. So, the 33 different things are addressed. Now, when Arjuna is addressing Lord as Devesha, it means that in the Vishwarupa Darshana, Arjuna is able to see everything there and he realizes, experiences that God, you are Devesha. Now, when he says Devesha, it becomes as if Lord Krishna is the Lord of just these gods, right? But now Arjuna is here, he wants to be connected to that Lord who is Devesha. So what does Arjuna do? And that is the mind-boggling beautiful thing here. Devesha has been used three times just in the 11th chapter. 11th chapter, 25th sloka, 37th sloka and 45th sloka. And you know what? To make sure that he is connected with this Devesha, Arjuna always chooses to use yet another name of Lord Krishna which is Jagannivasa. Jagannivasa means, Jagat means Gati, whichever is moving, that is called as Jagat. So we are in a Jagat because there is a constant motion in this uh, earth. So whatever that moves is earth and Lord Krishna resides in everything that is movable. So what happens is that Arjuna here connects that Devesha to the Jagat Nivasa, to the person who is residing here, residing with me. If I am moving, Krishna is also residing in me. So there is a lot of connect between that Devesha and this Jivatma na Arjuna, who is the Nara, who says that, hey God, you are Devesha, you are Jagannivasa. And all the three times, in these three slokas, the 11th chapter, 25th, 37th and uh, 45th sloka, he uses both these as if they are twin names, you know, Devesha Jagannivasa, Devesha Jagannivasa, Devesha Jagannivasa, Prasida Devesha Jagannivasa, be happy, oh Devesha Jagannivasa. So the beautiful thing is, not in one other place, has this name been used. All the three times Devesha is used, it comes only with Jagannivasa. So that's the beauty of one of the examples that has been used by Arjuna. Now moving on to Sanjaya. Sanjaya, I would say, means brilliance, you know. So that's a synonym of Sanjaya because so many of his usages are just brilliant. Arjuna has addressed Lord Krishna as Mahatma. Now the beauty comes 
because Sanjaya has also addressed Lord Krishna as Mahatma. Now what happens is Arjuna listens to the entire Bhagavad Gita in the final chapter, the 18th chapter, 73rd sloka, he says, Nashto moho smritid labda atvat prasadat mayachita and he says that sthitosmi gata sandeha karishye vachanam tava and he is now ready to fight. At that point, in the very next sloka, in the 74th sloka, Sanjaya says, Ityaham vasudevasya parthasya cha mahatmana and the beauty here is that now because Arjuna has decided to obey the orders of Lord Sri Krishna, he is a Sharanagata, he is a Prapanna, Sanjaya chooses to use the same name for Arjuna. Now Mahatma becomes an adjective to address Arjuna and not Krishna. So that's the beauty of Sanjaya's usage. Earlier Mahatma was used to address Lord Sri Krishna by Sanjaya himself. And now Sanjaya says, Arjuna is Mahatma, Parthasya cha Mahatmana, Partha who is now a Mahatma. Why Mahatma? Because he surrendered to Lord Krishna and now he is going to obey the orders of Lord Krishna which is Dharma. So Sanjaya uses this beautiful thing to use both uh, Partha and Lord Krishna as Mahatma. So that is a very, a very nice thing. And one other very interesting thing that I observed uh, in the course is, the very first name used in Bhagavad Gita was by Sanjaya. Madhava was the very first name that is used in Bhagavad Gita as far as the Namasa Gita is concerned. The first chapter, 14th sloka. And there Sanjaya says that Lord Krishna is there and um, Arjuna is there. He addresses that as Madhava Pandavas Chaiva Divyao Shangau Pradadmatahu. Madhava is there. Madhava means Ma is Mahalakshmi. Madhava means the God who is there along with uh, Mahalakshmi. Pandava means Arjuna. So what is uh, Arjuna now doing? He is blowing his conch. So that is a very very nice thing. So we have three people here. Lord Krishna, God is Mahalakshmi and Arjuna who is blowing this conch, who is in action, right? A hero who is in action. Now let's go to the final sloka in Bhagavad Gita, the 18th chapter, 78th sloka. That's again a sloka by Sanjaya. Now what does Sanjaya say there? Yetra Yogeshwara Krishna Yetra Pato Danudraha Tatra Shrihi Vijayha Budhi Dhruvani Dhir Madir Mama. Now there again he says Krishna is there, Danudraha Partha is there, Partha who is now having his Danud, you know his Gantibam is there in his hand. That kind of Partha who is in action, who is ready to obey the orders of Krishna, he is there willing to fight a virtuous um, uh, Dharma Yuddha. What happens at that point of time? Sri will be there with them. So wherever the Jivatma or Arjuna is ready to perform his duties, Krishna will be supporting him and at that point of time, Goddess Mahalakshmi will be there to give all kinds of prosperity. So this message we get in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita where the very first name Madhava was attired by Sanjaya and in the very final sloka of uh, Bhagavad Gita where Sanjaya again says Tatra Shrihi Vijayaha Bhutihi Dhruva Anitihi Matir Mama This is my conviction. This is what I strongly believe in. So the message here is as a representative of us, Arjuna performs all his duties. So we have to perform our duties and God will help us. Once Krishna is with us, Mahalakshmi is going to offer us all prosperity. So this is yet another beautiful place where Sanjaya is used. God is Mahalakshmi along with Lord Krishna. That's a beauty here. Now coming to our Lord Krishna. Krishna has been the world's best counselor, world's first counselor. So Arjuna was depressed initially. Uh, Krishna says, So get rid of all these things, get up, fight everything. And over a period of time, he pats Arjuna on his back. He says, you know what, you are Mahabahu, you can do it, you'll have to do it. You are a Kshatriya, don't give away your Dharma. This is a, a righteous war, everything. Now, Arjuna, over a period of time, once he is listening to Krishna, he gets a beautiful transformation. While listening to Bhagavad Gita, we get our transformation as well. So, Krishna has used the name Mahabahu to address Arjuna several different times. Over 10 times he would have used the term Mahabahu. But the interesting aspect is 
Mahabahu is also a name of Lord Krishna. Arjuna has addressed Krishna as Mahabahu as well. So the beautiful relationship comes here where these two friends, Arjuna and Krishna, share a name in common which is Mahabahu, which shows their valor because Lord Krishna takes care of the entire universe. He's a Sarvalokanayaka, right? He takes care of the entire universe because he's a Mahabahu. But he addresses his friend as Mahabahu just to pat on his back and say that, yes, you can do it. So these are some wonderful things that we get uh, from Bhagavad Gita. The pearls, some of the pearls, I'm sure as we dig deeper, we'll be getting a lot more beautiful pearls here. The amount of uh, research that is done, what Pravina shared as an analysis is mind-blowing. So that kind of effort that has gone so far, it is very important that I'm sure all of you have had the same experiences, probably different dimensions and perspective also you would have got. My request would be is to revisit the 98 episodes so that we can dwell more into Sri Krishna's names and share this to everybody. After all, this is all on YouTube, you can share it with anybody. And please spread the names of Sri Krishna because we need to talk more and more about the names of Sri Krishna, the amount of hard work that has gone inside to bring in for every average uh, 12 to 15 minutes of an episode, the amount of work that is done is roughly about three days minimum. Sometimes it takes more. Going deep into Purvacharya's works and going connecting with pundits and connecting with knowledge people and arriving at a capsule which can be presented well. So thank you, Pravina, for that. And let us remember one thing. Let's recite Lord Krishna's names and stay blessed. Namo Madhava Chuda Krishna Hare. Shikesha Keshava Govinda Vasudeva Bhagavan Janardana